In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who chose your servant, Bishop David Thompson, and endowed him with pontifical dignity in the apostolic priesthood, grant, we pray, that he may also be admitted to their company forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord fill your mind and heart and lips with the Holy Spirit, so that you may worthily and confidently proclaim the gospel to all God's people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. you and with your spirit. spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew Glory Glory to you, o Lord. when he saw the crowds jesus went up the mountain and after he had sat down his disciples came to him he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear family and friends of Bishop Thompson, it may have been a solemn proclamation in bygone years, the bishop is dead. Today we state with sentiments of gratitude, grief, and loss that Bishop David B. Thompson, the 11th Bishop of Charleston, has died. There was a man, one sent from God, whose name was David. This man came as a witness to bear witness concerning the light that all might believe through him. He was not himself the light, but was to bear witness to the light. It is the true light that enlightens every man who comes into the world. How do we reduce, confine, sum up the spectacular Christian pilgrimage of 90 years in a matter of a few minutes or a few words? Bishop Thompson was a priest, a bishop, and a friend. Three was his favorite number. <laughs> Perhaps his fascination with the number three began in his own family, where there were three children. 
Betty, and Eddie, and David. So today we will focus on three aspects of his life while he celebrates his new life with the ultimate three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bishop Thompson loved being a priest. We heard in our second reading from St. Paul to the Romans, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. I think Bishop Thompson's priesthood centered on his love for the Eucharist. He celebrated it almost every day. During his years as our bishop when he was in Charleston, you could find him every weekday morning at 7 a.m. in the lower chapel of the cathedral, celebrating with what became a very important community to him. About a dozen faithful joined the bishop for those morning celebrations. And I know the bishop appreciated the prayers and the support he received from this small group. In his retirement, he continued to celebrate the Eucharist every weekend at his parish. Christ our King in Mount Pleasant. For 14 years, he loved and embraced the people of Christ our King, and we responded to him with mutual affection. He would from time to time confide in people that I used to work for him at the diocese, and now he was working for me at Christ our King. <laughs> he died on our patronal feast day, the Feast of Christ the King. Bishop Thompson was an avid reader, an excellent homilist, a wonderful storyteller and conversationalist. He was an entertainer, the latter perhaps stemming from the early years of his priesthood in Allentown, where he was given the name Father Banstan. He had an incredible memory. He always wrote his sermons, but in his delivery, rarely referred to any notes. He loved good liturgical music when it was done well. And the second point, Bishop Thompson loved being a bishop. He was an authority on ecclesiastical protocol, and while he appreciated and enjoyed all of the accoutrements of being a member of the hierarchy, he was always so welcoming and comfortable in all situations. He could immediately put a person at ease, a great diplomat, a great sense of humor, a comforting bishop. Before celebrating Mass at Christ our King, he would ask me to adjust his vestments and pectoral cross. If the servers and the lector were in earshot, he would say, it's so difficult to keep a bishop straight. <laughs> bishop Thompson came to the diocese as a Yankee. I think he was what one would call a damn Yankee. <laughs> defined as a northerner who came south and never left. This was his home. Someone once asked him if he was going home for the holidays and he remarked, I am home. He quickly became one of us. I even heard him use the term y'all on several occasions, but he would quickly recover with the explanation that in reality the word was grammatically incorrect. <laughs> English grammar was of particular interest to him. Any letter that was drafted for his signature may very well be returned to its author with circles of correction marked by a red pen. He was very exacting. Upon his arrival in Charleston and investiture as bishop, much in the spirit of Pope Francis, Bishop Thompson was concerned about the church as not being a church of the people. He wished to involve as many people as possible in the life of the church. Bishop Thompson was a visionary he was an innovator. He initiated a process known as the Senate of Charleston. 
One of his favorite remarks was, you have to have the wisdom of Solomon and the courage of David. Bishop Thompson invited all of us, priests, religious, lay people, to help revitalize our church and to plan for the future. There was a place, there was space for everyone. Various commissions were established to address the needs and the issues of people in the church. He traveled miles throughout the state of South Carolina listening to his people. And listen, he did, and he heard a lot. Now, I know that some aspects of the Synod were controversial. Take, for example, the work of the Commission on Women. Despite the controversy, the bishop was faithful to the process and let the people speak while he just listened. Bishop Thompson always strove to render fair and just decisions. He was a good and holy man. The souls of the righteous are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth utter destruction but they are in peace. The quote which most affirmed Bishop Thompson's synod was at the conclusion when one man rose and said, thank you, Bishop, for giving us back our church. Once again in sync with Pope Francis, he applauded and recognized the role of women in the church. We had a number of priestless parishes and he appointed religious women, among others, as pastoral administrators. A recognition and appreciation of their dedication, their talents, and abilities. As an administrator, Bishop Thompson used collaborative style. He built a team, the Curia, which consisted of priests, religious, laymen, and women, to help him with the numerous administrative duties of the diocese. He often consulted members of the Curia when confronted with difficult decisions, and he listened, and he respected their advice and their opinions. However, Bishop Thompson knew that the buck stopped with him. His ten years as our bishop were indeed times of grace, times of challenge. He handled them all with dignity and courage. In the latter years of his retirement, he was delighted with the dialogue he enjoyed with Bishop Guglielmone and the invitation he received from the bishop to assist with confirmation in the diocese. So the story goes. Bishop Thompson accompanied Bishop Guglielmone on a visit to the Vatican. In their audience with Pope Benedict, the Holy Father said to Bishop Thompson, I understand you're now retired. Are you enjoying it? Absolutely, Bishop Thompson answered. I highly recommend it. <laughs> Nine months later, the Pope retired. <laughs> From then on, with tongue in cheek, Bishop Thompson smugly maintained the Pope had taken his advice to heart. <laughs> Bishop Thompson loved beauty. This cathedral is a testimony to his love for liturgy and the worship of God. And number three, Bishop David Thompson as a friend. He had so many friends, all of you in this church, and so far beyond. Bishop Guglielmone, you were a good friend and a good bishop to Bishop Thompson, and he spoke to me often about how much he loved you as his bishop and friend. And David Thompson, Bishop David Thompson, was my friend. Yes, he was also my bishop, the Bishop of Christ, our King. But through the years, we became best of friends and confidants. We prayed together, ate together, 
celebrated the Eucharist together, and supported each other in good and difficult times. Whenever we traveled somewhere together, he preferred to drive. He said he had run out of perfect acts of, con of contrition for my driving. <laughs> He was always punctual and most often early. As you may know, he was organized to the nth degree, very precise. To this end, would you believe that his Christmas gifts are wrapped and ready to go? Mally, the bishop's wonderful housekeeper and good friend, can attest to these facts. I know that each one of you may have a story to tell and I hope you find comfort in remembering and repeating them. I never played golf with the bishop. However, I know many of you did, and play golf he did, two, three, four times a week. Bishop Thompson enjoyed a good meal, but if it became a question of eating or golfing, I think he would have become noticeably thinner. If there is a golf course in heaven, I am sure that David Thompson is pleading with the Almighty to appoint him golf commissioner. <laughs> Monsignor Ed, you remarked that your brother was always joyful and upbeat. If you recognize these wonderful charisms in him, I'm sure you share them as well being his identical twin brother and his best friend. You also mentioned that the thrust of his life and ministry as a teacher, a priest, as a bishop and a friend was to help people succeed. He also recognized that when there would be some differences of opinions with one of his priests, he frequently would say, I just want to help you become the best priest you can be. The Beatitudes, which Bishop Thompson chose as his gospel, are so appropriate. A friend who was merciful and a peacemaker who hungered and thirsted for righteousness, whose reward now is great in heaven. In closing, I discovered among my collection of quotations one that seems so appropriate for Bishop Thompson. The author is unknown, and I have taken some poetic license. Many, by chance, are crowned as kings that are born rather to be tinkers or farmers or philosophers or farriers, or anything under God than to be kings. Whether Bishop Thompson willed it or not, he was a king, for he is one of the time-sifted few who leave this world when they are gone, not the same place that it was. We are proof that he has left his mark. Eternal rest grant unto Bishop Thompson, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace.
faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty and merciful God, that as you made your servant David an ambassador for Christ on earth, so you may raise him purified by this sacrifice to be seated with Christ in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Dear Betty and Monsignor Ed, along with the many nieces and nephews and grandnieces and grandnephews and cousins and members of the extended Thompson family, thank you. Thank you from the heart for helping to shape and form this wonderful man of faith and for loving him and supporting him throughout all of his long and very successful ministry in Allentown and here in the Diocese of Charleston. Thank you is insufficient to express the gratitude of the church for this one family within the life of the church. There's a certain poetic irony on this unusually splendid December day that David is spending so much time in church and not on the lakes. <laughs> a few years ago he had a, a hospital bout and my secretary told me, do you want me to send flowers to Bishop Thompson during his hospital stay. I said, no, send him two dozen Pro V1s. <laughs> He'll enjoy them far more than the flowers, even though a few of them might also end up in the water. <laughs> Pope Francis has spoken repeatedly and most recently referred in his apostolic exhortation about the importance of Christian witnesses who are joyful. As a matter of fact, in the apostolic exhortation, he says that sourpusses, I think that's a first time reference in a papal document, <laughs> uh, are never going to be very successful in proclaiming the truth and the joy of the gospel. And it is that joy that I think David exhibited throughout his priestly and Episcopal service. And it was that joy that made him such a successful minister of the gospel. And it is that joy that we now ask the Father to complete in his life in the kingdom of God. The chalice that we used at Mass was Bishop Thompson's chalice at his priestly ordination. And Monsignor Ed, I understand you're going to take it and continue its very fruitful use as you pray for your wonderful brother and for all of us.
Thank you to the Diocese of Charleston for providing such a wonderful tribute and prayerful farewell to a wonderful priest and bishop, one whose life was filled with joy and who became a successful minister of the gospel by sharing that with so many of us. It is a, uh, a fax we received. Your Excellency, the Holy Father was saddened to learn of the death of the Most Reverend David Thompson, Bishop Emeritus of Charleston. He sends prayerful condolences to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the diocese, and he joins them in gratitude for Bishop Thompson's years of Episcopal ministry. Commending the late bishop's soul to the merciful love of God our Father, his Holiness, Pope Francis, cordially imparts his apostolic blessing to all present at this Mass of Christian burial as a pledge of peace and consolation in our Lord Jesus Christ. And it is signed by Archbishop Pietro Parolin, the Vatican Secretary of State.